Do you ever just rest your eyes for a second, and when you open them, Nina has a new feature? Yeah, me too. If you image off the grid, or with slow or no internet, you want to pay close attention today, and for everyone else, you'll benefit from this new feature too. So keep those eyes open, and let's see what we've got. If you've ever picked up and took everything to a remote site, you needed to prepare an imaging session before leaving. I mean, it wasn't an absolute requirement, but it was advisable. You'd go into Nina while at home and internet connected. You'd pre-frame your targets with rotation, etc., and then save them. And you can still do that. But what if you got to the dark site and you weren't expecting that huge pine tree to block your target's imaging path? Time to find another target, but you won't be able to pull up a new framing image without internet access. So you just have to center it and hope for the best. So with this new feature and a new plugin, that isn't gonna be a problem anymore. Let's jump into Nina and I'll show you how to set it up and how it works. First, what did we have before today? Well, when I wanna image a target in Nina, I'll start in the Sky Atlas or framing. Let's start in the Sky Atlas because I think it's most likely a more common workflow for everyone out there. I'm gonna look up M51. And in case you missed this other recent change too, the Sky Atlas filters have been dramatically improved. Date, start and end times, altitude, minimum available duration, and some others are all available as filters. It also defaults to a minimum size of five arc minutes, but you can adjust that down if you wanna see even the smallest targets. Okay, back to the search. Here's M51, let's send it to framing. Notice I'm using the hips to fit sky survey for framing. Framing is downloading an image at the requested field of view size of those coordinates from the service over the internet. Depending on your requested field of view and internet connection, this can take a bit of time. All right, great. Now I can drag around my sensor rectangle to frame the image any way I want. Now let's pull M101 directly from here by typing it in and clicking on the pop-up result. All right, we're on the same page so far. There are a few options up here besides hips to fit. Let's click on cache as another option. This shows all previous images you've pulled up in framing. From here, I could reopen a previously cached image. Where do all these pictures live on your computer? If I go into File Explorer, I can navigate to percent local app data percent and press enter. This will bring me to that hidden folder location in Windows. Then I can find and click the Nina subfolder. This is also where your profiles, Nina log files, and everything else Nina is stored. Go into the Framing Assistant Cache folder, and here we are. There are four copies of each framing. One large one that we retrieved from the hips to fit service for each target, and three more smaller thumbnails for each target that were generated by Nina to help speed up the UI. There's also an XML file in here that keeps track of all the images that have been cached. Depending on your Explorer view, you'll see details or even images. Okay, back to Nina, and you can see that we can load a previous image from cache when needed without the need for internet. The cache is definitely handy and it loads very fast, but it also requires some forethought. I have to pre-cache everything I may want to image in the field so that I can determine my rotation and specific framing when I'm outdoors and away from internet access. All right, another option here is Sky Atlas Offline Framing. I'll select that and click to load the current coordinates from there. This pulls up a basic view of where the object and other objects are in the night sky. It's not great for framing, but certainly works for centering. So here's one of the cool new features. You can now click this icon up here to load previously cached images into this offline framing view. That can be pretty handy, but as we look around, I've only got two cached images so far. If you've been using Nina for a while, you likely have a lot more. So arguably, this can now be an easier way for you to get to your cached images in a non-static interface that you can actually navigate. If there was only a way that we could get all of the other space filled in, oh wait, that's what the new plugin is for. Let's go to plugins and install the new framing cache generator plugin, then restart Nina. This plugin uses the hips to fit service to pre-populate your cache. After the restart, we go to the installed plugin. By default, it retrieves five degree panels and doesn't get anything below 10 degrees on your horizon. The defaults here should work fine for most people, but feel free to change whatever you feel is needed. You can see that based on these settings, I need to download 1,828 images. 
When I click this button to start the process, it will take a few hours. While it's running, it will provide time estimates and track progress, but this is something you need to do during the day or when you have clouds. Also, don't access the framing tab while the download is in process. You'll want a good internet connection and some disk space. I'll show you all the files in a minute. Okay, through the magic of editing, I have all the files downloaded. Now let's go back to framing. I still have the Sky Atlas selected, so let's search for something new like the Horsehead Nebula and load the image. Well, there it is. Wait, but where is it? That's right, don't forget to click the icon in the top right. There it is. And if I zoom out, I can see the cache is all stitched together. I like to call this the Nina Framing IMAX Edition. Don't worry about what looks like gaps off to the sides. They tighten up as you center them and zoom in. Notice as I drag the screen around, the coordinates are updating on real time, as is the altitude chart as well. We can take a quick look at the cache folder and see everything is here. Lots and lots of files at this point. About 1.7 gig based on my settings. Well, now we have a sky map and framing without the need for pre-caching individual targets or having internet access once in the field. I can see myself using this option when at home just because of the interface it provides and the fact that it's faster than downloading individual images. Also, I can just poke around in here until I find a part of the sky that has an altitude chart that I like. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Personally, I love this capability and the fact that it showed up with almost no fanfare is absolutely crazy. If you do any off-the-grid imaging, this is huge. But I do think this is helpful for anyone, even when at home. So hurry up and power on your mount, install the update and plugin, start the download, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and get ready for your next clear skies, whether home or away. No.